Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Scala and Spark for data science. Now throughout this series we're going to try and have a couple different sections. Now the first one is going to be just an introduction to data analytics with Spark and Scala. Then we're going to proceed with programming with Scala and we may split that up into several subsections. We're going to have Spark data frames, machine learning with Scala, regression with Spark, classification with Spark, model evaluation, and if we have more time, we'll also go into more advanced topics for uh, Spark ML. Now, first off, we're going to talk about just the general idea of Scala. Scala is a general purpose programming language, and it is a object-oriented language as well. Now, Scala is also functional in the sense that every function is a value or every uh, function is an object. Now this series will give you an overview of the Scala programming language. It is definitely not a deep dive, but we're going to be using it just in terms of data science, particularly how it works with Spark. Uh, Scala's demand has risen exponentially over the last couple of years uh, because of Apache Spark. And we'll uh, get into it just a little bit of what Spark is in context of big data, and we'll also give a generalization of what big data actually is. Now, what is big data? Okay, usually our local machines can have from zero all the way up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, maybe you're some of those lucky few that have something even more, but what can we do if we have a larger data set? We're gonna get into trouble, okay? It'll bog down our machine and we won't be able to do the calculations we need. Maybe we can store it on a SQL database and move it to a hard drive instead of RAM. Or we can use a distributed system that distributes the data to multiple machines. Now, what is the difference between local and distributed computing? Now, our local machines, such as your laptop, okay, will have a couple cores. You can just split that data up from the local cores. Um, and this local process will use computation resources of a single machine. Now, a distributed process, though, has access to computational resources across uh, several machines connected throughout the network. And after a certain point, it is going to be easy to scale those for many lower CPU machines than it is to scale up a single machine with a high CPU. Now our distributed computing, okay, these distributed machines also have the advantage of very, being extremely easy to scale, okay, just by adding more machines. Now you can also uh, think about these as being extremely fault tolerant, okay? If one machine fails, then the network can still go on. You will not lose your uh, data and you will not lose your uh, calculations. Spark, okay? We're gonna just have two quick sections here. It is kind of what is Spark, how do we use it? And uh, Spark data frames. Now, Spark can use data stored in a variety of formats, AWS, Cassandra, HDFS, as well as a variety of others. And they use, when it, once we actually import that data, we're going to be using in Spark data frames. Now, Spark data frames are the standard way to utilize Spark's machine learning capabilities. And it is a data set organized into columns, okay? So specifically named columns. So this is equivalent to relational databases or, um, data frames in R or Tibbles, okay? We also have the uh, Pandas uh, data frames as well in Python. Now, data frames themselves are constructed in a wide array of resources or sources, okay? Structured data files, tables in Hive, external databases, and RDDs or uh, resilient distributed data sets. Um, today, this has just been a quick um, information session on what the series is gonna be about. If you are interested in upcoming lectures in this series, please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day.